Hey everyone, Mano back here with another Destiny 2 strategy guide. How good is a cheese if you can't use it? I've seen a lot of interest in proving ground Grandmaster Nightfall glitches, and that is understandable because the Adept Palindrome is offered this week, which is a highly coveted weapon. In addition, double drops are up this week, so we have a chance to get lots of different rolls. But so many people can't clear this strike because there's a couple fundamental things that other videos are not showing you. A lot of people post about the cheeses and that's about it, but they don't show you how to do the rest of the strike. So in this video, I am going to be showing you primarily how to do the actual tank room, which is the huge issue that a lot of people are having. And then also how to do the boss room legit. I'm gonna go ahead and cover the cheeses as well. It's actually a pretty simple cheese. There's two parts to it. First of all, you need to be running Skyburner's Oath. With Skyburner's Oath, as long as there isn't an anti-barrier mod on it, you can actually shoot the Skyburner shield generator. That's the big dome area and the little machine part that's inside the dome that generates the shield. You can shoot those things outside as long as you're using the explosive damage of Skyburner's Oath. Do not put a mod on it and it will work. The second part of the cheese is going up into some of the hidden spots up on top of the boss room area so that you don't have to actually fight the enemies on their level. You can fight from an upper level. I'd recommend standing on this platform here and then jumping onto the silver part of the banners that are outlaying the entire side of the room. Go ahead and jump up onto this pillar and jump to the left or the right hand side. You can then do damage from the left or the right hand side together as a team using Sentinel Titan or there is a new improved piece of cheese that you can use right here. You can see Lemon is moving us into this spot right here. We're going to go ahead and follow him. You're going to go outside of the actual boss room area, jump through here. And as you go through here, you're going to jump back up on top and then you will fall down into one of the two sides. There is a corner that you can hide in over on the left hand side that you can actually shoot the boss. However, you can still take damage there if you are not in the correct spot. Right here is where you're gonna wanna stand if you're gonna do the improved cheese spot. And this is actually a pretty good spot right here. However, you can still take damage. However, whatever you do, do not push out to where Lemon is because where Lemon Lord is, this is actually a spot he showed me that you can get wrecked at really easily. Some people have been saying that these are good spots to stand in and they are not. They will one shot you from that location and you have no position to hide. In addition, if you die at these locations, you have no way to get rezzed by your teammates and it makes the strike go even longer. In fact, the people who I've been seeing actually do these cheeses, most of them are not even doing these on the Grandmaster difficulty. Most of the cheeses that I'm seeing are on master level at best. If you're going to do the cheese, stay on one side together as a team. Pop Ursas whenever you're gonna go do damage because you can have your entire team wrecked. If you have to do the cheese, have everyone stay up on one side together. Make sure that you don't fall down any of the holes. Have one person pop Ursas and have one person do damage. Have one person sit in the back as a reserve so you don't fail. The truth is, however, so many people struggle with earlier parts in the strike that they don't even have an opportunity to get to the cheese spot. So I'm going to show you how to beat that now. For a foolproof strategy for this, I would definitely recommend that people have Anarchy. That is a really great weapon. You could also use rocket launchers if you'd so choose. You'll definitely want to make sure that you have sniper rifles of varying types. I used the Succession Raid sniper rifle because it had recombination, so that meant I never had to reload. But I don't recommend using Izanagi's here. The ammo capacity is just not that great. And also, there's not a lot of time for you to reload, especially if you're going to go back and forth with Ursa's. Some other weapons that would be good are scout rifles like the trusty or using dead man's tail. I personally like pulse rifles for this because they have a good mix of damage as well as distance and range. I'm using the stars in shadow pulse rifle that you can get from the crucible. Also last perdition as a void pulse rifle is also a really good choice. If you have the potential to make a Warmind Cell build, you certainly could do that. However, I really recommend having a Charge with Light build using Protective Light, or if you're using Taking Charge as well as High Energy Fire. I use that in combination with Sundering Glare on my artifact to do some crazy damage on some of the enemies. But I think the most important part 
is having two Ursa Furiosa Titans. Not only will they generate lots of orbs, they basically will protect you against most forms of damage throughout the entire strike. Most importantly, in the tank room. Hunters and Warlocks, fear not, you are important too. If you are a Warlock, I actually really recommend bringing Chaos Reach. Well of Radiance doesn't really do that much. It generates a few orbs and it kind of gets you out of some bad situations. But the truth is, is the faster you kill the enemies, the more easily you'll be able to move around the room, whether it's the tank room, the boss room, or anything else like that. If you're a hunter, you should definitely be running the Omnoculus new chest piece that will grant you more damage resistance as well as give you a second smoke grenade on your hunter. It is so critical. In addition, I highly recommend that anyone who is running a Void subclass and has the opportunity to do too is to run suppressor grenades. Not only can you blind enemies with these, you can also do void damage from a distance, which is really nice, especially in the tank room. All right, let's go through the strike to go over the important details. First of all, the opening section, you can skip all the Vex. You don't even need to fight them. Come up onto these rocky areas and ledges up here so that you can skip all the Vex. Basically, all you need to do is kill the Unstoppable that is down fighting the Vex. Move up, there will be a Barrier Champion that will spawn, and then an Unstoppable as you make your way up here. Once you kill the Unstoppable Champion, the door will open, and the main boss will come out of the door from the tank. This spot right here is a good spot for cover, but do note that we are standing right next to a spawn door for some enemies. That is on purpose because we are going to kill them as soon as they come out the door. As you see here, as soon as the boss goes into his little shield, you'll see enemies start to spawn up over there. Right here at this point, we're going to go ahead, suppress enemies, knock them out as quickly as possible. But there also is going to be an unstoppable that we're going to stun right there. We're going to be right in a good position and he'll actually continue moving to his left, your right, and you'll be able to do some damage to him. This is a really good spot for cover. However, the frag grenades that the Cabal shoot can still hit you over here and the unstoppable can hit you with some of the fire attacks here as well as the missile attacks from the main boss can hit at this section. Just take your time, pace yourself, use lots of cover and you will be fine in this section. One of the reasons why I recommend Anarchy is because of what I just did on screen. I can use a single shot of Anarchy and hit right underneath where the shield generator is and it will tick down damage. No cheese required and you'll keep the damage advantage of Anarchy at this point. The other thing you could do is just use a sniper rifle, pop on in there, take a couple of shots. You can see that me and my teammate over here are just taking pot shots back and forth and pulling the aggro for the boss so neither of us die. Okay, so it's time to get into the main part of the video here, which is the tank room. How do you handle the tank room? How do you handle all the ads? The most important thing is to have a plan that's communicated well with your teammates and using Ursas. What you want to do for the first phase, as I'm calling it, the phase without tanks and interceptors only, have an Ursas pop dead center. So it takes all the aggro and that allows you to shoot the two snipers. You are going to overlap the two Ursas for just a second. What we did with our team is to communicate when we were at the last line of the super. There's a thin line in the super. As soon as we saw that, there was no countdown. We just said pop it when we got to that back line, and then we'd replace the other person. So right here at this point, you can see I'm switching out, and I'm able to just continually use our shields to protect ourselves from the enemies. Additionally, this is great for Warlocks and Hunters because they can get lots and lots of orbs, they can pop their supers, they can clear adds, they can use all the advantages of their characters to shred through these enemies. Now, at this point, there will be some different combination of shielded enemies that are named Cabal, and they are random every time. There will be some that are Void, some that are Solar, and some that are Arc. If you've got your team composition set up, you should have at least one of each damage type, so it shouldn't be too tricky to knock those guys out. As soon as you get to this section, what you need to do is have a focus point for your team. You'll notice that we shifted slightly right and slightly to the left. We were going after the interceptors, and we left the barrier knight up just for a little bit so we would continue to take damage with our Ursa's shield. This would continue to give us orbs as well as our super back. At this point, we focus the interceptors on the left and the right hand side of the room. And by doing that, we're actually able to knock them out using suppressor grenades or using like the frozen orbit sniper rifle is a good choice or last perdition as a pulse rifle. All really good choices. Now here you can see that there was a guy hiding in that back left corner. 
If you look at those folks and you kill those two Cabal that are hiding where the tanks will spawn later on, it will actually spawn more ads. Make sure that your team is ready when you do this because once those two Legionaries are dead back where the tanks spawn up, there are going to be more enemies as well as the potential for dogs to come out. Suppressor grenades are really nice on the dogs as are the super for Ursas, although I would try to keep your super as much as possible. Also, if you have the potential at this section where we're at right now, instead of killing the named enemy that will try to sometimes push you, take pot shots at all of the enemies that are coming up. And then that Interceptor, who is probably going to be the most infamous character in Destiny for a while, the Interceptor that just moves left and right out of range. And as soon as you come close to it, it pot shots you. That's the one you're going to want to take out first. Take out that Interceptor as quickly as you can. And then you can take care of the named enemies at your leisure. The advantage of doing this is that you can actually go down, pick up more ammunition, and you don't have to die from the Interceptor nuking you. So I kept this whole section pretty much in the video as a whole. I didn't do any cuts because I wanted you all to see how the flow of the battle went. The dogs actually spawned up on the left side here and the right side as well. There is a door on the bottom right hand side where the enemies will spawn up. That's also where the Unstoppable will spawn up. On the left side of the room, it's on an upper door in the back left corner. That's very important for how we're going to handle the second part of this strat. The next part of this section is the tanks, as well as the anti-barrier champions and things like that. What we're going to do is we are going to set up on the left side of the room. I really recommend the left side of the room because of where the enemies spawn in. Remember, I mentioned that door on the upper left-hand corner. That is going to funnel a lot of the enemies towards you. And most importantly, one of the anti-barrier champions. So you can see my entire team is moving over here to the left-hand side. We're going to go ahead and take pot shots at the enemy. And as soon as the interceptor is toast, that is when the next phase is going to start up. Speed is going to be the key here. As soon as the interceptor is down, I'm moving my head on a swivel right over to the sniper on the right-hand upper side. A teammate is getting the sniper on the left-hand side, and then as soon as the snipers are ready to go, all the adds aggro to us on that left side, and we're good to go. Throw a suppressor grenade, and we start to do damage to the enemies. Because we set up on the far left side, we'll be able to draw in the anti-barrier directly in that choke lane right there. In addition, we've got all the tanks and all the anti-barriers focusing right on this area here. Now, this may seem dangerous, but it's actually quite safe. You don't want to be back against the wall because that's how tanks can kill you. Their explosive damage can rebound off the back wall. So right here, we don't have a wall behind us. We're very safe because we have Ursas. Now it is chaotic, but we're able to focus up on all the tanks, all the additional champions, as well as the named enemies and knock them out ridiculously quickly. Hunters and Warlocks, this is a great opportunity for you to use your supers, whether you were doing damage on the tanks. Any enemies that are going to come and run at you, like right here, you can go ahead and blind them. In addition, you can finish them and get more ammunition without having to run anywhere. Now, when you kill a tank, that will spawn another anti-barrier champion. But because of the strategy that we're using, it is not a big deal. Using Ursa's going back and forth specifically at this spot with this rotation is very easy to complete. Because we've killed the anti-barrier on the left-hand side and there's the two anti-barriers on the right, we're going to focus up on the tank. With both tanks out, you actually have a lot more movement throughout the entire room. Now, I know some people think killing the anti-barriers first might be a good choice. However, since you're using Ursa shields, it's actually a lot simpler just to continue to just switch in and out, in and out, back and forth until we kill both tanks. Focus up on the second to last barrier colossus. There's one more anti-barrier to kill, but after this point, it's not going to be a big deal. Most of the enemies that are left are just legionaries with shields. You can start to shift over on the right-hand side. You can see that the anti-barriers and a named enemy is right in front of us. Go ahead and take them out at your leisure, and you'll be good to go. I cannot stress how important it is to have this position in this particular spot. I have seen some videos where people set up on the right-hand side. The problem with that is because the anti-barrier will potentially rush you from an opposite side, and it will kill you very quickly if the anti-barrier gets close to you, whether with a stomp, whether with its arc attack, whether it's something else like the tank killing you. This, I have found, is to be one of the safest spots in this strike. 
The next most important thing, making sure you communicate and have a plan with your teammates. If something goes wrong or something doesn't quite work, have a plan. Are you going to go to the center? Is someone going to pop their super? Is the hunter going to make everyone invisible? It's going to be one of those things where that you communicate with your team that will save you in this strike. Having communication is clear, but also killing the enemies as quickly as you possibly can to create moving space around the area is going to be huge. Snipers first, then the anti-barrier or the tank or the named champions is going to be the first priority. Communicate that with your team. I recommend going after the tank first, but just because you heard it from me doesn't mean that it's the right plan for your team. If your team decides to focus an anti-barrier or a tank first, you need to communicate that with your team. All it takes is for one person to freak out and not get their shots off and then have missed a super and then get shot by something and then you will end up wiping. The last thing I'm going to say about this room, it looks like there's a lot of cover. It looks like there's a lot of little walls and things you can stand on. There's none, zero, nothing. There is no cover. It looks like there's a lot of cover, but if you look at this wall right here, there's a hole underneath the left side. There's little, little spots where people can shoot through. If you're too close to it, a tank will annihilate you. An anti-barrier will hit you on the shoulder and you'll instantly die. That's why I really recommend using Ursas at this section, because if you do that, then you know you've got cover. There's no fake cover that Bungo decided to go ahead and put up and have a little tiny little space of a sliver where some person can pot shot you and instantly kill your team. After that, the tank section is over. You've done the big major majority of this strike, or at least the part that people really, really struggle with. What you're going to do is go into the engine section, which is where the wheels and the treads of the actual tank come up. Basically, there's going to be a couple of unstoppable, a couple of barrier, nothing too crazy to deal with. Just pop your super whenever you feel like you are going to get pushed by one of the unstoppables here. We didn't even pop it because we could just take pot shots at it. There will be snipers on the left side ledges over here closest to the engine room. As soon as you kill that sniper and you kill the other enemies, you can grab the ball and then go have someone close to the door so that you can go ahead and get all of these legionaries and gladiators and have a choke point for them. As soon as you go into this room, there are going to be two Scorpiuses that you're going to need to kill, two turrets. We're going to have someone pop their shield after we get all of these different enemies toasted. We'll focus up on those two turrets, and then we're going to turn our attention to the right where there will be a barrier champion and some adds. So right here in this section, we're looking at those turrets. There's one there and one on the far left side. We actually already killed them. There's the other turret. Focus up on the right-hand side, and here is the barrier. Focus up on him, throw a suppressor, and you're good to go. After you clear the engine room, you're going to go over to the opposite side. There will be turrets set up here. Go ahead and knock them out as quickly as you possibly can. There will also be one or two named enemies as well as a barrier over on that side. Just use the same strategy that you used in the tank room. Continue to switch Ursa's shields and things like that. Focus up on a couple of the enemies. Watch out for the sniper who is up on top of this roof on the video that you can see right here. You can see that there's going to be a sniper right there. He can take you out. Just be ready for it and you'll be fine. Back into the engine room where the turrets were before. Go ahead and do the same thing you did before. Kill the gladiators. This is also a good time for hunters and warlocks to pop their super if you want to generate more orbs. There will be a barrier champion that will be on the left-hand side again. However, the turrets will not respawn, so you just need to focus up on the adds that are to the left from this position. As soon as you're done putting all of the cores back into the engine room, you can see here that we're going to do the same strategy again. There's going to be an unstoppable and a barrier in this next room. Just constantly chain your Ursas together as the enemies push up. Go ahead and knock them out. You will want to make sure that you retain some super energy as well as possibly use special ammo finishers on any of these folks who are pushing through here. That way your team has plenty of ammunition for the next area. Or you can go ahead and finish the two shielded guys that are in the left and the right hand side of the room that I am shooting in now. Just take a second, make sure that you're armed and ready for the boss room. It's not too tricky. Don't run into the room before making sure that your team is good to go. At this point, you can either choose to use the cheese or you can do it legit. Legit isn't as crazy as everyone makes it out to be. If you know what's coming, we're going to go to the boss side of the room. As soon as we start up the boss encounter, there will be ads that will spawn up from the door right there. As soon as we start to do enough damage to the boss, the enemies will come on down. And then you can either suppress them 
or you can go ahead and leave anarchy for them or you can stun them you can see i've already got a couple of traps set up for them and we're good to go there is a tunnel through the right hand side underneath where the boss spawns up that you can go ahead and use to rotate left and right and left and right as long as you're not there constantly and not there during some of the fireball attacks you will be fine jump through and hug the edges and you won't take damage at this point the boss isn't really much of a threat the ads are toast you get them as soon as they spawn up take care of his fire attacks either by running left and right or just shooting them with your primary they're not that deadly now you do need to make sure that the boss doesn't hit you right next to a wall his area of effect is absolutely devastating and if you do take a shot just pull back into cover until someone can either rotate and help you out or if you can just get your health back putting up a barrier here will not always be a great idea because the boss can basically one shot it but once you get the ads down there really isn't a stress with this just continue to move left and right to damage until he moves into his first dome shield he'll move into his first dome shield when he's at one third life and there's a little line in his life gauge that you can actually figure out and then you're going to focus on these doors right here there will be two unstoppables that will pop out of the door just focus fire on one of them on each side have anarchy ready to go and you'll be fine now you do need to be careful because he will shoot fire at this point but this area here is a lot safer because if you were at the entrance side of the room you would have no place for cover and you'd have no way to hide if the anti-barriers pushed you here in this position you've got plenty of places to hide you've got one person on one side one person on another easy to rotate left and right stay alive pick up reses it is not very difficult you can also shoot the unstoppable from the opposite side and use that for cover at this point this is probably the trickiest part of this strike you have to get inside of the dome shield to knock out the shield generator at this point i'm going to pop my super I'm going to take all of these shots right here and I'm going to basically provide some cover for the person who's going on there. Now his stomp attack is very, very powerful. You want to make sure that you're not caught in there without your super like I was there. I was very, very lucky, but if that happens, the easiest thing to do is to retreat and then back up. What you can do at this point is you can just have two people push up or have an invis hunter push up, do an anarchy shot into the shield. You just have to be careful as you do it because the shots are very deadly. Have one person constantly pulling aggro so that the fireball attacks, which can one shot you, do get cleared. Once the dome shield comes down, more enemies will spawn, but none of them are unstoppables or champions. They're just normal legionaries. Take them out while dodging your fireballs that are coming to kill you. At this point, it's not a bad idea if you're a hunter or a warlock to knock out some of these enemies that are pushing you just so you can stay safe. What we did is we rotated back to the entrance side of the room, had the hunter make me invis, and we basically pulled all the enemies over so we could face them, move the boss back just a little bit. Although you can kind of experiment with this strategy. Just make sure you don't get hit by any of the frag grenades. Remember that anti-barrier will also shoot through those basic cabal shields. No reason to sit there and try and hit the center of the shield when you just shoot him in the face. What we're going to do now is we're going to head over to the entrance side of the room one at a time. The reason we're going one at a time is that no one of us is going to take the full aggro. Also, we'll be able to kind of watch and protect. The hunter can go ahead and throw invisibility grenades. But with us over here on the entrance side, you can see that we can kind of head glitch some of these areas. This is really good because the boss, when he goes into his second dome phase, is going to make a dome and shoot fireballs where the boss spawns in. If we hide there, the fireballs have a chance of killing us. So rotating to this side is ridiculously smart. Take a second and get all your players over to this side, and then you can either use Anarchy or other weapons to proc the next section, and you'll be good to go. Right here, he is in his dome shield, and you can see the Unstoppables start to push us. You can go ahead and stun them, do some damage while they're super far away, and not have to get killed by the fireballs. You can actually watch left and right and see where those fireballs track. What I'd recommend is have one person try to stun one of the sides, Two people focus up on one, knock them out as quickly as possible, and then instantly focus fire to the other unstoppable. After this, there's only one more set of ads, and that's it. That's all the champions. That's all you need to do. Right here, I'm going to move over to the left side to res my partner right here. As soon as that happens, we're in good position. If we need to grab ammunition, we can do that as well. 
but continue to pay attention to the fireballs as they can kill you. The last and probably the trickiest part of this strike is right here, where you need to jump up and get the dome shield knocked out. I would not necessarily recommend using your super for the reason you're going to see in three, two, one. Instead, do this. Go to the boss side of the room and have one person on the left side and one person on the right and one person back where you were. Have the person back at the entrance side of the room try to pull some aggro while the two people who are closest to the boss take pot shots at the shield generator. Don't spend too much time jumping up there because if he is on that side, he can go ahead and stomp you and kill you and knock you out. At this point, just take your time. The shield generator will get knocked out and be ready for the last set of ads that will come through the door right here. Knock them out on the side that you can. If you need to rotate, go on through. Do notice that the boss is going to move a lot more at this phase. At this point, just make sure all of your teammates are up and make sure that if you can, you aggro the fire towards whoever is safe. Knock it out, pop your anarchy, and this is it. This is all you got to do. Make sure your back is not up against the wall. And again, you can see here, he will start to shoot through the tunnel. Just move to areas of cover where he can't shoot you. Use your heavy and you will be good to go. All right, everyone, that's it. I wanted to show the legit strategy of how to do this because I have a feeling that Bungie is going to patch this sooner than later. I doubt that they're going to make people pay $50 for a Nightfall Strike, which they just confirmed on Twitter, and not have it fixed up and have it be a top-tier difficult strike. When and if the cheese is fixed, you have a strategy, you know what to do. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope it helps you out a ton. And if it did... Make sure you leave a comment down below and consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. I'm going to be putting out a lot of Destiny 2 content as well as potentially some Outriders content coming up here as that game is releasing very soon. If you'd like to see any of that stuff, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications so that you don't miss a single video. Come out to my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash 777 where we help out with PvE content, exotic quests, raids, and more. And we just have a great time. Come on over and join the community. Come join the community Discord as well. The link for that is in the description box below. We have LFGs or looking for groups so you can find other people to game with. We also have a great section where people can share music, pet pics, memes, other things like that, and you can stay up to date with what is happening in the community. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. Good hunting, and I will see you next time in the universe of Destiny.